Hello and welcome to a look at a flashback for the Amiga, a game that was developed by Delphin Software and released by US Gold. The plot scenario thing behind this game is that Conrad Hart, an agent of the Galaxia Bureau of Investigation, finds himself in grave danger. Him and his girlfriend Zonya has uh, been developing a new item, a molecular density analyzer, and during testing of said device they discovered that certain people had a much higher molecular structure or much more dense molecular structure than they should have, indicating perhaps that they might not be human at all. And Conrad and Sonia decides that uh, telling someone in authority might be a very good idea. But then of course Sonia disappears. And Conrad finds himself being hunted. In his attempt to escape he gets hit by some sort of beam weapon thing that paralyzes him. And he is taken aboard a shuttle where he is exposed to a memory erasure program thing. And while he is a half a conscious, he hear, or over, over here, I should say, two individuals talking about um, what's happening. Because one of them suggests just to kill Conrad and be done with it, but um, the other guy uh, insists that uh, keeping him alive is an insurance, because what they intend to do is, um, is to replace Conrad with one of their own agents, and in case that agent is exposed, they will send Conrad back, minus his memory, and of course, this um, manages whatever all kinds of things, he's gone completely dulali, and they, um, whatever agency is behind this kidnapping would be safe. Conrad manages to uh, get himself going and uh, tries to escape. He finds himself um, boarding or jumping on top of whatever a hover bike and escaping from the shuttle, which has moved into another planet, by the way. And of course the guards uh, try to catch up to him and they fail, so instead they fly after him in a shuttle and shoot him out of the sky, as the introduction showed. So, of course, uh, he crash lands and uh, they are scattering in the local area and find no signs of life, so they are satisfied that they have uh, done combat in and uh, move away. But shortly after, Conrad wakes up and uh, as he turns over, he knocks down a plastic metal box thing, so it falls down about 10 meters and uh, he decides to get up and collect it. Why not? And that is, of course, where the game starts. The overarching plot is revealed as you play the game, and I could tell you as much as I know of it, but that is sort of spoilerish, and considering that these uh, videos are not intended as playthroughs unless stated as, as such, and more of an overview review kind of thing that might encourage people to take out the games themselves and play them. I don't want to go too much into the overarching plot. But Conrad's objective is to regain his memory and find a way back to Earth so he can warn the authorities. Using the cube once picked up will reveal a message from Conrad himself, and even though plot-wise it's supposed to be a sort of backup of his own memory in case he needs to convince the authorities of the discovery him and Sonia made, it's still phrased as if the message was directed at himself anticipating him losing his memory, which was, uh, yeah, there's no explanation for that part, but irrelevant. The main thing to take away from that is that Conrad needs to get himself to New Washington, which is the capital of the planet he's on. 
and the first of six levels involves him navigating a jungle, solving various uh, problems, avoiding various obstacles, and dealing with various enemies and that kind of stuff in order to progress to the next level. I am not entirely sure which uh, special training Convert received from uh, the bureau he's working for, but acrobatics definitely seems to be one of the things he's been given quite a few sessions in because he is quite an agile fellow, which is very, very useful because of the environment that he has to navigate. He can walk and run, which I suppose is nothing special, and jumping in and by itself is nothing special either, but he can scale uh, ledges and uh, do standing jumps and do longer jumps and grab onto ledges in midair and that kind of stuff. It's something that will likely be incredibly reminiscent of another game, but I will get back to that somewhat later. As you can likely imagine, he has to combine those uh, movement abilities in order to navigate the different levels, and depending on the situation, uh, one uh, type of jump may be preferred over another, and in other situations, the uh, specific movement is uh, paramount to get right in order to prevent convert from uh, suffering from a fatal experience, whether it's being shot, falling off ledges, or getting fried by something electrical. Uh, plenty of that around, by the way. Besides his acrobatic ability, Conrad is also equipped with a gun with infinite ammunition, which is always a nice thing. And of course, you can imagine that a gun is used to shoot at stuff, and uh, he will have to make heavy use of the gun in certain situations in order to progress. Besides the gun, you also have a shield pack generator kind of thing that can absorb up to four shots fired at him. It will not prevent damage from environmental hazards such as electrical fields or falling damage. Thankfully, the game has various generators strewn about the different levels where you can uh, recharge the shield, restoring it back to full strength. As Codmart moves along, he will have to pick up various different objects and items and speak to various different individuals in order to progress through the different levels because. Person A will ask for an item, and once given, will give Convert another item that he can use to progress. And uh, it is a gameplay thing that, uh, yeah, I will cover later on. And on that note, let's just do the technical side of things, just to, why not? From a graphical point of view, I don't like using the word but I feel I sort of have to by calling the graphical quality overall uh, borderlining exceptional. The different levels are very, very distinct. They may be a bit bland, but that is by their nature. Um, it is hard to make a level which by its theme is bland. Um, exciting without it being jarring, so I have a certain forgiveness in that direction. But the characters, the backgrounds, the animation of the different characters and enemies and that kind of stuff is of an incredibly high quality, and it is running smooth as silk, and it is incredibly enjoyable to look at. The sound design, the sound effects are very satisfying, especially the gun sounds. You can argue it's a bit silly that uh, a shotgun and a pistol sounds the same way, but it's completely irrelevant because it's a cool sound and you can easily hear that whichever it is that's being used, it's something that's going to hurt. Other sound effects like the sensor beeping and that kind of stuff are run-of-the-mill generic kind of thing, nothing exceptional, but by and large, I am very, very happy with the sound effects. Music, uh, mainly the music is uh, 
somatic jingles that will indicate that something is about to happen or action is afoot or something similar. And mm, I suppose it, it fits the game perfectly well. I don't dislike it and I don't, yeah. It's one of those things where I'm perfectly neutral in regarding, uh, or regarding the music, I should uh, say. It's definitely not bad by any means. When it comes to the controls, uh, the default controls are what you would expect them to be. Left, right, up and down will do, left, right and up and down things. If you use the standard control setup with one button joystick, your fire button will be used to interact with things and once you have drawn your weapon will be used to fire the weapon. For movement, um, when you are walking, you can do a standing jump by using fire and up, but if you hold on the fire while moving left to right, you will start running and that will give you access to various different jumps. If you're crouching and moving sideways, you will do a roll kind of thing. But in the main menu, you have the option to use a double tap to um, arm your weapon. If you don't have that option enabled, you will have to use the spacebar to equip your gun. And while it is a nice little function to be able to do, I personally found that it was um, distracting because um, when you see an enemy and you spam the fire button to arm your gun, because you're spamming your fire button, you Put your gun away just as quick as you arm it, and I found myself getting shot unnecessarily because I was just hammering away on that bloody fire button, trying to shoot whatever it was that uh, was very busy shooting at me. There's also a two-button option, but the uh, rumors will have it that uh, it is not working correctly at all times, and I cannot confirm or deny whether that is the case or not. But even though you need you, you use the fire button to interact with items, you need to use the enter key to use items. So you can go up to a person and speak to them using the fire button, and then you have to give them an item, which you have to look up in your inventory, and then use enter to actually give them the item. And you have to hold down the enter key for about a second before it registers what you are trying to do, which is something I find a bit, mm, I suppose. The controls, by and large, feel sharp and responsive, so I have very little issues with them. When it comes to the gameplay, you would likely call this an action-adventure kind of thing. Delphine Software themselves would like you to think it is a cinematic experience, which I suppose is fair enough. I would be a bit creative and argue that this game is a mix of Prince of Persia and a mild point-and-click adventure. There can be very little doubt that the main character's movement set is incredibly heavily inspired by Prince of Persia, and the fact that you have to interact with various different people and various different objects and go and fetch objects for people so you can progress kind of thing, to me, at least, is a somewhat reminiscent of one click. The game contains a heavy dose of trial and error, and the different levels can have a certain amount of backtracking. You may find that type of gameplay incredibly durable or incredibly frustrating, depending on your preferences. There are in-level save points on the various different levels, and some would argue that there's too far between them, me being one of them. But those save points are only uh, in-game save points. So if you have to shut down your system for whatever reason, any in-level progress will be lost in the process. But thankfully, once you have completed a level, you will be given a password that you can punch in on the main menu and progress from that point onwards. Delphine Software was one of very few developers who just couldn't do wrong. People have been arguing that the plot in this particular title is a bit weak, but if you enjoy the gameplay style, it would be incredibly unfair to call this game anything but absolutely excellent. 
And on that note, I will say thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye bye for now.